In President Biden's words, the United States is all in on Africa and all in with Africa. At the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit, the private sector is recognized as a key player in development. The fact that the conversation around Africa and the business prospects has taken a totally different dimension. Um, what you'll find is a very strong retinue of um, minority bus black business owners, um, African entrepreneurs who have flown from different parts of the continent alongside their government folks to be here. Um, the engagement has been quite robust. Um, you find quite a number of seminars and conversations going on, public speakers, panelists and all that. But what you find interesting is the, the type of engagement that happens after those meetings. People are talking to themselves. They, you find that these are, Af these are U.S. business owners who have been you know, um, talking about the, the idea of investing in Africa or doing business in Africa, but want to understand firsthand the challenges, the opportunities, the frailties, the shortcomings, and the promise you know, of doing business on the continent. It's not about these types of events. You know, how pragmatic will they be afterwards? What's the follow through? You know, um, would these conversations translate into businesses and deals being signed? I think that's what's, what's most important. There seemed to be a renewed focus on um, youth and um, the, the, the digital space, the, the, the telecom space, and most importantly, um, businesses that are centered around empowering the next generation of folks who are concentrating on the future of work on the continent. But for the home to the world's youngest and fastest growing population, there's also a potential challenge with misconceptions about investing in Africa. The lack of knowledge about the continent is because of the many gaps in our communication, right? What for me was very surprising was the the, the deep gap that, that exists between what exists on the continent and what the understanding is of, of business operators in this part of the world. So I think that there is a very strong need for that gap to be bridged. People really need to understand where the opportunities actually lie and how to access those opportunities. For example, I mean Nigeria for loads of investors who are looking at attracting investments to our country would find that it's, it seems to almost be like a hideous task because there seems to be a perception already about you know, the environment and all. And so we, our, our government and our private sectors alike would need to be able to champion a different story about Nigeria. And Nigeria's creative industry took center stage at the summit as a driving force of Africa's growth. There is a cultural connect between the United States and Africa, particularly Nigeria, and the role that Nigeria plays in the creative industry globally. The cultural influence Nigerian music and film has um, on the entire continent, and right now even the States, the number of awards that you know um, Nigerian mu musical artists have garnered over time, and the the influence—I mean, all across you know uh, malls and parks and all that—are songs. And the United States entertainment industry was also built along those lines, you know, where people came in and saw the opportunity that lied within the space and and the six-mile radius of of Hollywood turned to a 30 mile you know, radius and the entire industry has been changed ever since. And so because we share a lot of things um, culturally, um, it makes all the sense for there to be a strategic relationship between the entertainment industry in the United States and you know, Africa's entertainment industry. Everyone has been talking about the potential for Nigeria's film industry and creative industry. We are the second largest film industry in the world that grew organically with little or no support, right? Now is the time for a different type of structure to be built for the industry, to take the industry to the next level. And what that structure is both digital and physical, 
right? So digital infrastructure will involve the creation of data centers to help people be able to produce, or to help content creators, you know, be able to produce at little or no cost. And then the infrastructure to help structure the industry through a pilot program, like what we are doing, as you know, we are, we, in partnership with the Lagos State Government, we are investing in the setup of, of, of a film city in, in, in the Jiriakbe area of Lagos. And what that project is, is to be able to create um, an institute for filmmakers alongside sound stages. So we are bridging the gap between academia and industry. For those people who want to promote the creative genius of the continent will have a home. When you create an environment like this with the right incentives, tax incentives that can um, allow folks like the Netflixes, the Amazons and, and um, the Hulus who are looking at coming into Africa and giving them a place where they can produce the right type of content they need, there's no other way to do it. Having the governments, both federal and state, paying a lot of attention on the creative industry as the United States government is doing right now and, and trying to find areas um, of connection, whether as policy makers or the, the sign of co-production treaties with, with our HBCUs in the, in the, in, in, here in the States who are looking at creating culturally relevant stories that can be commercial, commercially viable, not just domestically for us on the continent, but globally. So I think that we should have a bold vision, have a place where the creatives can actually thrive, have um, um, economic zone created for the industry, and take this sector as a sector that would rival the oil and gas, the Greek sectors in our country, because it can and it will. The U.S. Africa Leaders Summit went beyond a policy mandate to leverage on the U.S. business community to help bolster Africa's private sector. Nkechi Nana, Arise News, Washington, D.C.